Hello, my name is Kelly Rall, and I'm the coordinator for pre-kindergarten and family engagement. And I want to welcome you to today's second grade family literacy event. I hope that while you're here today, that you and your child uh, together will have some fun and learn some new ways to support reading with your student at home. I'm going to do this session a little differently than I usually do. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to go back and forth between my PowerPoint and um, the camera because that way I'll be able to demonstrate some of the uh, activities that uh, we're going to do that you can do at home. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change over to my PowerPoint now. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm sorry, it's taking just a minute to load. Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, as I said, this uh, originally was presented as a live online session, but I'm going back and making this recording after the fact. Uh, originally, we partnered with Midway Park to host this online second grade family literacy event. But today uh, you are um, going to be working with me and I hope that uh, you find it uh, enjoyable and educational. So if you don't mind, please take a minute to let us know that you participated today and use this Google form to sign in. You can um, type in the a web address or you can scan the QR code with your camera and then it will take you straight to the form. So I'm going to stop and give you a few minutes to do that. It should be a pretty simple form with just a few questions about uh, who you are and where your child attends school. So while you're working on that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move on. The first couple of slides will um, uh, be able for you to uh, listen to as uh, we get started. So today we want you to learn, uh, we have three reasons why we're here today. So we want to show you two or three easy reading and writing activities that you can do at home two or three ways you can use simple household items that you already have to support learning at home. And um, there's a very important why for why we do this. So when your child learns how uh, skills are taught at home, uh, let me say that again. Uh, when your child learns how skills taught at school are relevant in everyday life, they're more likely to retain the, the information. Uh, additionally, students who have strong support at home are more likely to earn higher grades, have better behavior, better attendance, and they're more likely to go on to a higher education after they graduate. So the habits that you're forming today by doing this uh, literacy event online uh, will go a long way. And we hope that it begins a habit that you continue to um, hone and uh, continue to engage in as your child moves up in grade level. I know the older your kiddos get, the more independent they become. And um, sometimes that makes it tempting for you to say, well, their child knows what they need to do and it's up to them to do it. And they have to do things more independently. So um, I don't really need to, I don't really need to read with my child every day. Now they can read by themselves. They don't need me to read with them. And that's actually not true. Children do need to read with their parents uh, for as long as possible. At least, you know, 15 or 20 minutes a day, every day will go a long way. And then finally, uh, we are going to show you how to use some simple strategies, and then you can do them uh, with your second grader uh, right then and there. And uh, we'll do them together today. And then 
uh, later, the next time you're reading with your child, you can use them at home. So our goals for today are to learn how to do an interactive read aloud. That's our first goal for today. Um, we're going to, um, the steps in interactive read aloud are to look at the pictures on the front cover and uh, talk about what you already know about this topic. So <clears throat> when you do that, this actually activates yours and your child's uh, prior knowledge about a topic. And so it really starts them thinking about, um, about what they already know and what they might want to know. Now, when you're reading with your child, if the text is repeated, then have your child read it with you. Uh, you might even at some point stop reading it, let your child read it for you instead of with you. And while you're reading, ask your child, I wonder questions. I wonder what's coming next. I wonder what animal that is. I wonder why that character did that. Um, all of these questions are going to help your child um, realize and build their own reading habit that includes thinking about what they're reading while they read. So the um, a lot of times we just read for fun and we don't always stop and think about what we've read. And then uh, sometimes later on, if we try to remember it, we can, but sometimes we can't. Uh, as text becomes uh, more difficult to read, sometimes um, it is harder to remember those details. And so this habit of thinking while they read uh, can be simply supported by asking these I wonder questions. Then at the end, we want your child to retell or summarize what they've read. So you can um, actually stop and retell after just a few pages. Uh, you can stop and retell at the end uh, of a chapter. You can stop and retell again at the end of a book. So um, the more times that you stop and retell, uh, the better able your child will be to um, actually remember what they've read when they finish reading. So this is very, very important. So now I'm going to uh, do an interactive read aloud with you. I'm going to get started with it. And then if you have found a book that uh, you would like to um, practice with your child, then you can do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my camera now so that you can see how I would do uh, an interactive read aloud with my child. Okay, so the book that I have to share with you today is called, What Would You Do With a Tale Like This? Now, it's always a good idea just to talk about the parts of a book. So as we know, this is the cover of the book, and uh, this is actually the title of it. And it's really interesting how the illustrator did that. They actually um, made put their words in the shape of a tail. I think that's an animal tail. Um, notice also that there's a medal on here. This is a Caldecott medal, and this is a very important award. It's a very prestigious award for a book to receive when they are when it has been published. So this this is a great book. Um, what do you let's talk about now? What do we think this book is going to be about? What do you do with a tale like this? This is not an actual photograph of a tail, right? It's an illustration. So, um, I don't know. This book could be about real animals, but it could also be about imaginary animals. I don't know. It could give us information about animals and their tails, or it could tell us a story about an animal using their tail. I don't know. Oh, look. There is the rest of the animal on the back cover. How exciting is that? Do you know what that is? Uh, some people might call that a lizard or a salamander. You know, we know it's not a snake because it has legs and snakes don't have legs. Hmm. So let's just take a brief picture walk. A picture walk, remember, is when you just 
uh, look at the pictures and, and talk about uh, what might happen in the story. Okay, so we know that's a fish. And, um, oh, very interesting. So now we're looking at different animal parts. So it isn't just about tails, huh? And then there are animals. And then, oh, now this is ears. Oh, okay. So I'm getting a good idea of what this book is going to be about. I think this might be a nonfiction book. Uh, when you're reading a nonfiction book, that means it's going to give you information and facts and details. So it's not necessarily telling you a story about uh, an animal, but it's going to give you information about several animals. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with our reading. Animals use their noses, ears, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find out more about these animals. Let's just take a minute and look at the back of the book. So you can see here, it's kind of like a glossary and it, it would give you more information about the animals that we're going to be reading about. Okay, what do you do with a nose like this? Hmm, I wonder if that's an elephant. And what does an elephant do with their nose? Do you know? Hmm. This kind of looks like a dog's nose. I really don't know what kind of nose this is. That's really weird looking. And this one kind of looks familiar, but I can't think of what it's called. And that looks kind of like an alligator. So we'll see. If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. <gasps> oh, yep, that's what that is. That's a platypus. I was right. So you can see I made a prediction and I was right this time. I'm not always right. If you're a hyena, you would find your next meal with your nose. Mm. Hyenas. Have you ever seen a hyena in the zoo? Yeah, they're kind of funny looking. They look kind of like a, what kind of animal do they resemble? What do they look like? Exactly. They look kind of like a dog. So I think they're in the dog family. If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. <laughs> That's kind of fun. And if you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. I did, did not know that a mole's nose looked like that at all. That's very surprising to me. And if you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. Mm. Breathing through your nose while you're underwater. I can't do that. Can you do that? Hmm. I wonder which animal part we're going to read about next. That was really interesting. What do you do with ears like these? Okay, that really looks like a rabbit. I wonder if that's a cow. Do you think that's a cow? We'll see. And that looks like a rabbit too. Why would we have two of the same animal? And this could be a spider's leg. In this, I don't really see any ears on that picture, do you? Huh. Okay. Let's see what kind of animals these are. If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep cool. Well, I'll be. I did. I had never heard that before. They use their ears to keep cool. I would think they use their ears to hear. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. 
that's really strange. If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. Oh my gosh, did not know that at all. If you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. So somewhere on this part of that animal, a whale has ears. I wonder if that's it right behind the eye. That's really hard to tell. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. Wow, I'm learning a lot about animals and their body parts. I thought all the animals use their body parts the same way that we do. Are you seeing that? Is that true? Boy, I was way wrong. What do you do with a tail like this? Okay, I have to tell you, I've seen plenty of these. This looks like a skunk's tail. And why don't you talk to your child right now? What do you think? What kind of animals do you think these are? And what do they use their tails for? I thought this was a skunk. And when a skunk lifts their tails, they spray a, uh, an aroma that stinks to high heaven. And it is awful. You never want to get sprayed by a skunk because that smell is hard to get rid of. Okay, but what do you think about this one? And this one. And this one. And this one. Hmm. Talk about that with your kiddo. So what I hope you see me doing is I'm talking about the pictures. And I'm, I'm talking, I'm reading the words, and then I'm talking about the pictures. And um, for today, you know, I'm kind of talking as if you're there. Um, but with your child, you might not want to stop and talk as much. It really depends on the book. This book kind of lends itself to talking about the different animals. And so uh, that's why I'm talking a little bit more. Uh, but you can keep reading. You don't have to stop and talk about every animal. And you don't have to stop and, um, and ask, I wonder, questions on every page. You just uh, figure out for your own when is a good time to stop and talk about things. So I'm going to keep going. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. Hmm, I thought that might be a giraffe. If you're a skunk, you lift your tail to warn that, that a stinky spray is on the way. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. And if you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. Oh my. What do you do with eyes like these? Okay, I see the eyes. Unlike the ears, it was kind of a little difficult to see. But I see the eyes on all of these animals. I see maybe a couple of birds. One looks like a horny toad. Let's see. If you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high in the air. If you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. And if you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. Okay, my finger's kind of covering up that fish. A four-eyed fish? I didn't know there was such a thing. If you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. This is the bush baby. And if you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Ooh, <laughs> that, that's kind of gross. What do you do with feet like these? Hmm. Very interesting. These are hooves. Those kind of look like toes. This looks like a palm, kind of, like a hand. This is a webbed foot. And that? Hmm. 
Looks like a spider or a grasshopper or something along those lines. I'm not sure. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. Oh, it wasn't a hand, it was a foot. Oh, and I should have known that because it said, what do you do with feet like these? If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance with your feet. If you're a water strider, you walk on water. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. And if you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. Wow, everybody uses their feet a little differently. What do you do with a mouth like this? Hmm. What do we use our mouths for? I wonder if other animals use their mouths the same way. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. I don't do that. If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. I definitely don't do that. And if you're an egg-eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs larger than your head. Well, I definitely don't do that. And if you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. Oof. And if you're an archer fish, you can catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. Wow. Now we get to the part where it talks about the different animal parts. Noses, ears, tails. Eyes, feet, mouths. Yeah. So this back part is um, that informational piece that we call the glossary. And it's divided up the same way the book is. So here, I didn't really actually think that this was going to be the end of the book. But it doesn't have an ending exactly like a storybook does so you can when the book is over it's just over okay so now i would want to summarize what this story is remember that's the last part of an interactive read aloud and so summarizing means that i'm going to retell something that um i'm going to retell what the main idea of the book is and then i'm going to give some important facts and details. And so if I were going to summarize this book, then I would say the the book called What Do You Do With a Tail Like This isn't just about tails. It tells about different animal body parts and how, uh, how the animals use those body parts. And what I found out was that it was uh, that not all animals use their body parts the same way humans do. And I think that's really, really interesting. Uh, for example, um, some animals use their tail to give themselves a bath, while other animals use their tails to hang from a tree. Some animals use their noses to um, smell their next meal to, to find food and other animals use their nose uh, to help them move through the dirt underground. So um, this book talked about uh, tails, feet, uh, eyes, noses, and mouths of different animals. And so that's my summary. So you'll notice I didn't go page by page I said in my own words what this story is about, and that is so important. One thing that I could have done is I could have stopped and uh, after two or three pages and said, okay, what did we just learn about animals and how they use their noses? Okay, so that is uh, an example of how you do an interactive read aloud. So when we're done here today, I hope that you will go through, uh, you will find a book to read together and and you will follow the steps of the interactive read aloud, which were to uh, preview the front cover and the 
uh, pictures in the book. Remember, that's called uh, taking a picture walk. Uh, if you see some words in the story that you think your child might not know, you might talk about them as you go, but not very many. Um, I didn't do much of that. Um, I also We also talked about whether or not this book is fiction or nonfiction. And then, uh, and it's always wise to make a prediction about what you are going to read. What do you think this book will be about? So those are things that you do before you read the story. While you're reading, then you should ask, I wonder questions. And as you go, make predictions. I wonder how they use their tail. I wonder what kind of animal that is. Or I think that animal is a, um, an elephant, then turn the page, confirm or reject your predictions. So those are things that you do during your reading. You can also stop and retell after a page or two to uh, make sure that your student is understanding what they read. And then at the end of the story, we did a short retelling in our own words about what we think this book um, was about. And always remember too that a retelling shouldn't just tell the most interesting things. It's just going to tell the highlights. Okay, so um, you're not going to retell page by page either. It's going to be pretty short in three to five sentences what a what the book was about. So I hope that helps you know how to do an interactive read with your student. So I'm going to put this down over here and I'm going to go back to my presentation now. So I'll start sharing my screen. So now you should be able to see my um, presentation again. So remember we did, uh, we just did an interactive read aloud together. So some other activities that you might be able to do with this book are now on your screen. So let's try one of these. Which animal do you wish you could be? Hmm. On a piece of paper, write, I wish I could be a, and then you fill in the blank, because, and finish the sentence. And then um, give your, your child a few minutes to draw a picture of the animal they wish they could be. Okay, so uh, you can uh, pause your video now while you do that with your child, and then uh, we'll go on to the next one. So activity number two is critter comparisons. Open your book, open your book to the middle of the page, to the middle pages. In this book, it was the eyes. Talk about how the eyes pictured are alike or different. That's comparing and contrasting. Turn the page and talk about how they use their eyes the same or differently. So uh, again, this is comparing and contrasting. Remember that comparing is when you compare things, you're talking about how they are the same. When you are contrasting two things, then you're talking about how they are different. And then talk about, do you use your eyes in the same way that these animals did? So this activity is called critter comparisons. And you can do this with any aspect uh, of any book. It just depends on um, what the book is about, if it's a story or if it gives facts. Um, so just remember that all of these activities can be um, tailored according to whichever book you're reading. So you don't have to have the same book that I had. These are just some activities that were um, particularly conducive to the book that we read today. So if I were reading the true story of the three little pigs, I might turn to the middle pages and see that pig number one or pig number one huffed and puffed and blew the house down and pig number two, what did he do? So what did they do the same? They both destroyed the house. What did they uh, do differently? 
one huffed and puffed and the other one, what did the other one do? Mm -hmm. So see, you can use this activity of comparing and contrasting with multiple books. One thing that you can do is called echo reading. And in this poem, we're going to connect math and reading. We talked about animals and now we have a poem called 100 Animals. So when you echo read, you read one line and then the child reads the same thing you said. Uh, if you're sitting next to each other, it's always great to point to the words as you go so that the child can see uh, that print moves left to right, that if there's punctuation at the end, you stop. If there's not punctuation at the end, you keep going. Um, but this is a fun way to, um, to read poems with your child. Also, uh, remember this, it's great. If you wanna make it more fun, you can change your voice uh, with each line that you read. So let's give it a try. We'll do echo reading. And so I read first and then you read. Okay, are you ready? 100 animals. Now you repeat what I said, that's the echo part. I went to the zoo and what did I see? 100 animals looking at me. There were 10 tall giraffes eating from a tree. 10 silly monkeys scratching on their knees. 10 sleepy snakes lying in the sun. 10 elephants munching on peanuts one by one. 10 leaping tigers performing in the shows. 10 pink flamingos standing on their toes. 10 grouchy bears trying to get some sleep. 10 happy hippos in the water deep. 10 roaring lions walking two by two. 10 galloping zebras, all living at the zoo. <laughs> That's a fun way to use math and, and reading together. So I would go back and I would say, okay, let's count by tens and we can point to each 10 to see how far we get. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Oh, all right. It really is a poem about 100 animals. So remember, echo reading can be done with anything. Uh, it could be done with the recipe. It could be done with poetry. It could be with song lyrics. It could be with a lot of things. So um, don't forget to use that as one of your strategies to make reading fun at home. So there are some other things that you can do at home to help support learning. Uh, you can use a plastic or a wooden spoon and stir things. Count by fives and tens as you stir. Count backwards. You can even stir backwards. Point to each other as you take turns saying words that rhyme with the spoon. So I would point to me and say can and point to you and you would say man and then point back at me and I would say fan, and then you, we would point to you and you would say ran. See how that works? You can tap out patterns um, like drumming patterns or if you're looking at um, a visual with a pattern, then you could tap, if it was colors, you could tap out red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. You can also decorate your spoon like a puppet. This works great with plastic uh, spoons. What else could you do with your spoon? There are lots of things. Now you could also take an empty box and turn it into a calm down cube. Label one side jumping jacks. The second side, take 10. That means take a break and revisit the issue. The third side, uh, take a snack break. The, then take it uh, on the fourth side, 
Take a deep breath and hold it in your mouth and then release it. And then on another side, you could add two. Well, actually, you have two more sides because boxes have six sides. So on the last two things, you can make up the other things that you want your child to do. So work on this together. Uh, it'll be even more fun. You know, with everything that's going on in the world these days, um, sometimes we all just need to step back and take a minute and, and calm down. And that's called self-regulation. That is something that we want uh, kiddos to be able to do at school. But if they can practice it at home, then it will be easier for them to do it at school when you are not there. Something else that uh, we want to encourage you to do is practice your high frequency sight words with your children. Uh, we like to use the uh, read, spell, read. Uh, this activity says say and spell. So if you're looking at a uh, flashcard with the word family on it, then you could um, read the word family, then spell the word F-A-M-I-L-Y, and then read the word again. Read, spell, read. In this activity, you're actually reading it, uh, family, then you would uh, spell it out loud, F-A-M-I-L-Y, and then write the word. So you're actually getting a uh, read spell right. And then uh, after you write the word, you could actually read the word again. So there are lots of things that you can do. Uh, the links that you see on this slide actually go to a public information folder that I have online. And um, the word list, the second grade high frequency word list for HEB is in that folder. And then uh, so is this handout that shows you what you can do to help your child practice high frequency words. Uh, if you have not already completed a free and reduced lunch application, please do that. Um, the numbers that um, the number of students who um, qualify for free and reduced lunches is uh, very important to our district. That is those Percentages are included in the formulas that uh, help us um, get money from the state to help fund important um, reading and math programs. Uh, they also help pay for teachers and salaries. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have as many people as possible uh, fill out the form. Go ahead and fill it out, even if you think that you don't um, qualify. Or if you think it's even going to be close, go ahead. Uh, also fill it out if you think that even if you don't think you would use it. Yeah, I probably qualify, but, you know, my child takes their lunch to school anyway. So it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. It really helps us with this funding issue. Uh, here are a couple of videos. One is in English and one is in Spanish that uh, you can actually uh, watch and um it will help explain that a little bit more. But since this is a video, you can't actually click on the link. And I pretty much summarized for you what the video already says. So what do you want to do next? The next thing is really important. Relax. Remember, second grade is a whole year long. And your child's teacher is very excited to with, work with your student and watch him or her grow and progress and thrive as a reader. So just remember, Read with your child every day. Talk about letters, words, and parts in a book, parts of a book, or talk about letters and words when you're doing something else. Maybe when you're driving down the road, when you see bulletin boards, or, um, you know, just any time you have a chance to talk about words and letters. Then also talk about what you read. You know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just, you know, if you're reading... The, the mail, we all get a lot of junk mail, right? So if you talk, if you read the junk mail and then talk about it, then that's great. And then the most important thing is keep everything as positive and fun as possible. I also want to share information with you about Parent Academy. HEBISD Parent Academy is live. So you can go online and click on our website and you will see... Um, a menu at the top that shares uh, the information that's available. You can actually register for Parent Academy 
and at the end of the year we'll be checking to see who all has registered. There's also a transcript that you can download and print. Uh, you can print and uh, then keep track of your hours. And at the end of the year, we'll call for all of the Parent Academy transcripts and we'll have a graduation at the end of the year, complete with caps and gowns. So just um, if that sounds like fun to you, then go ahead and, um, and register for Parent Academy, print your transcript and um, keep going to sessions. Every time you watch a video, that counts as, as attending a session. So just um, definitely make sure that you do those, um, that you take participate in this, if that's something that sounds fun to you. We also have some um, limited English proficient um, websites that will help you if you have a student who's uh, learning English as a second language and uh, all of these links that are referenced here will actually be housed in the public information folder that uh, I will post online along with the video. If you have questions, you can always contact me. Uh, again, my name is Kelly Rawl, and you can reach me at my email address. That's the best way. K-E-L-L-Y-R-A-L-L, -L -L, no spaces, at h-e-b-i-s-d dot e-d-u. That's k-e-l-l-y-r-a-l-l -L -L at h-e-b-i-s-d dot e-d-u. And if you have any ideas about how I can um, do this better next time, then just please feel free to um, email me or to uh, post it in the chat box. Thank you again. And uh, if you have a few minutes, uh, would you please go to this form and fill it out? Uh, that way we'll know that you were here, that you watched the video all the way through, and that um, that will give you an opportunity to share any thoughts on how we can do things better. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the school year. And remember, we're here to help you in any way possible. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Thank you. See you next time.